Hi, I'm Lois Lee. And I'm John Landman. And with our colleagues Stephen Bullivant and Miguel Farias, we're directors of the Understanding Unbelief program. The Understanding Unbelief program is an international, interdisciplinary program of research looking at what's traditionally been called unbelief. So scholars from across the human sciences have spent quite a long time investigating the similarities and differences among religious beliefs, practices, and experiences. They've even offered theories to explain those similarities and differences. Much less scholarly attention, however, has been paid to what's going on when people lack those beliefs, those experiences, those practices, those of what we might call the unbelievers. Yet unbelief is both widespread and growing. We now know that over a billion people worldwide profess to having no religion, what scholars often call the religious nuns. Uh, now, not all of those folks are unbelievers, uh, but quite a few are. And we now know that at least 500 to 700 million people in the world say that they have no belief in God. In social and political life too, we see the flourishing of publications and public debate around what's known as the new atheism, associated with authors like Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris and others, who are trying to make the case that religious worldviews, religious beliefs and so on, aren't only inaccurate, but that they might do more harm than good. So around all this, we see the growth of vigorous public debates and discussions around the social and personal impacts of religion, atheism, secularism, unbelief in general. And we also see increasing interest in the role of non-religious individuals and non-religious perspectives within, for example, education, legal frameworks, and public policy in general. And while we have an abundance of partisan writing about religion and atheism, championing religion against atheism, championing atheism against religion, we have a relative lack of substantive, nonpartisan academic scholarship about unbelief, about its nature, its causes, and its consequences. Now, it's true that we've seen a growth in the scholarship on atheism and unbelief in the last 10 years or so in sociology, anthropology, psychology, and indeed across the human sciences. But this work faces a number of challenges, most notably the challenge of academic silos. Academics in each discipline are talking mainly to themselves and not sharing their beneficial methodologies and insights with those from other disciplines. We also face the challenge of cross-cultural scholarship, where most of the scholarship done on atheism and unbelief is done in the West. And not even that, but with particular groups in the West, mainly atheist and humanist groups. So through the Understanding Unbelief program, we hope to take those challenges head on. We have core multidisciplinary research working across five different countries, and we have three distinct grant competitions. And through that, we hope to break out of those disciplinary silos, and we hope to map unbelief across cultures and across social and demographic groups. And through that, we hope to build a much better scientific and public understanding of unbelief. So whether you're a researcher, a journalist, a filmmaker, or a policymaker, please consider joining us on this program. Check out our website, apply for grants, and join the wider conversation.